The Dolphins placed Tua on an injured reserve list after suffering another concussion in the third quarter on Thursday night's game versus the Bills. This happened on a running play when Tua was lowered, lowered his head into DeMar Hamlin. Bart Scott on first take says he feels bad for Tua and compared his situation with Tony Dorsett at the end of his career. ESPN's Ryan Clark said both the Dolphins and the NFL have to I uh, have to error on the side of concussion, uh, sorry, caution when it comes to managing CTE related issues. Tua's new contract has $124 million in his injury guarantees, which the Dolphins would have to pay if he isn't medically cleared. The Broncos dealt with dealt with the last season with uh, Russell Wilson a big a big reason why he was benched in the middle of the season. Rex Ryan said that the Dolphins should give the Steelers a call about Russell Wilson after naming Justin Fields their week three starter. Former quarterback Chase Daniel proposed a three-team trade with the Dolphins, Rams, and Panthers, which would be Dolphins getting uh, Matthew Stafford, the Rams getting Bryce Young, and the Panthers getting a second and third round pick. That is not going to happen, by the way. And Chase Daniels, we love you. I love what you got to say. Most of the time, this is a horrible take. All right. The Tua thing is, is sad. And if I was a guy like Tua Tagovailoa, I would probably retire. He's had too many concussions in a four-year span, and that's counting college. This is a guy that earned his money. He's going to receive his money, and no matter what, he's going to get $124 million guaranteed no matter what happens if he can't play again. Why go out there and put your body or your head at risk? Andrew Luck didn't want to do it anymore. Andrew Luck was the one of the top three quarterbacks, top four quarterbacks in the NFL. Tua, last, I would say the last two seasons, has been amongst the top seven, top eight quarterbacks in the league when it comes to yards, touchdowns, and everything like that. How many, how many concussions has he had in the last three years? What is it, five, four? That tells me he is going to have brain trauma after his football career. And what worries me about Tua is that he's still, what, 27 years old? How many concussions does he need to realize his career is done? It's over. That wasn't intentional, by the way. Jamar Hamlin, who's gone through so much, I, I've, I've read some things on social media. That was not intentional, okay? For anybody that came out and said that it was intentional, Demar, Demar Hamlin had nothing to do with intentionally trying to hurt Tua. What I do know, Ryan Clark, Art Scott, they all know a little bit about concussions. They know all about CTE and the situation that the NFL is going through over the last couple of years and that the NFL is trying to clean this up and try to fix it and trying to change rules and kick off rules and all this other stuff. Is it going to benefit in the long run? It hasn't. You're trying to protect these quarterbacks and these quarterbacks are going down every single year. And it's not just concussions. It's the field. If the NFL knows the field is not healthy for these players, why don't you change it back to grass? But they don't want to do it because guess what? Players say it helps their speed. And, and the NFL thinks it helps the game, that it's it, it's turf. I disagree. When we've heard players come on this show and tell us it's like hitting cement. It's not. Grass is like, you know, I, I, I can't even explain it. It's like hitting, you know, falling on a rug. And then you, you're playing on turf. It don't matter how, how thick the turf is. You're putting this, your body at risk. And that also causes concussions because of the, the turf. Because what happens when your head hits the turf? It's like hitting cement. So why isn't the NFL fixing that? Why aren't they realizing that the turf is not healthy for these players? That's one. Number two, I look at the quarterback position as the most important position in professional sports. It is. And to lose a star quarterback, your number one, your franchise quarterback that you just paid a ton of money in the offseason, sets your team back now this season. I do not believe Tua will be back 
for at least eight to nine weeks. And if I was Tua, I'd sit out for the rest of the season and then obviously go to specialists and doctors and figure out if it's worth me stepping on a football field again in my career. I'm already, I've already made $124 million guaranteed. I made some money as a rookie. I am set for life. My family's family's family is set for life. I just made almost $200 million in four years of football. There is no reason for him to go back out there and put his life or his family on the line. And yes, a life. One day he's going to go down. He's not going to get back up. That's scary. And if I know Tua is getting married or he just got married and he wants kids, how is it going to how is it going to feel when you have kids and you're at the age of 50, 53 and you're in a wheelchair and your parent, your kids that are 20 years old are pushing you around cuz you don't even know how to feed yourself. That would be worrisome if I was Tua Tagaviola. I want a life after football. I know you love the game, the camaraderie. We've heard Tom Brady, wanna, when, he, when walking away, that was the thing that he was going to miss. Traveling, hanging out with the boys. It just, to me, as a football phenomenon and, and, and a person that studies the game of football the way I have over the years and played football, I have only had one concussion in my life playing all competitive sports. And that, that goes from hockey, football, all the different sports, baseball, basketball. I played competitive for many, many years. I've only had one concussion. And it wasn't even in football or any sport. It was in a car accident. Okay? So that tells you one thing. And I would worry if I was the Dolphins. Not because I had to pay him. Not because... He's a player on my team and on my franchise, and, and, and my franchise depends on. I'm worried that this guy is going to go out there and he's going to put everything on the line and he's going to die on a football field. That's what I'd be worried about. That my quarterback, my franchise player, is going to go out there, put his life on the line. He's going to get hit one day and he's not going to get back up. And then I'm going to be blamed as a franchise. That I should have stepped in and said, oh, to a, it's over. It's over. You, you know, I, we love you. We gave you the contract that you wanted. We got to move on. We got to, we, we have to move on at this position. We don't want to see you go down. We don't want to see something happen that we're going to regret as a franchise. Because to me, right now, the Dolphins, they're one and one. Losing Tua is going to be a long season. They don't have a real backup. I've heard that Tom Brady might come out of retirement. He's not going to come out of retirement. Guys, stop it. He's not going to do that. All right. They're looking at other options. What are the options? Tyrod Taylor is a jet. He's going nowhere. So where are your options at? That's what I'm worried about. If you're a Dolphin fan, you can't be happy about this. But you also want to make sure that your quarterback and this player is not stupid enough to go back out there sometime this year and put his body and his life on the line for the game of football. I wouldn't do that. And even as a Jet fan, and I'm an Aaron Rodgers guy, and I'm this and I'm that, if I know that this guy's life is on the line, I would tell, I would even as a fan, I'd say, you know what? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. And you can only do build up so much with trying to build up the offensive line. And again, that's the argument I think that a lot of people were worried about with Tua at the start of the year because Miami lost a lot of offensive linemen. But that particular play that he got hurt on, that was completely him having not having those instincts to protect his head. Why is he trying to barrel his head into Demar Hamlin? Stop blaming Demar Hamlin. Whoever's doing that on social media, that's absolutely ridiculous. He's doing what he has to do, making a tackle. Tua had the first down. He could have just slid. There's a reason you're taught to slide as a quarterback. That's why Cam Newton got hurt a lot. That's why Lamar Jackson has gotten hurt a lot because they weren't sliding at the beginning of their career. And as much as we like to bash Russell Wilson, I will give him a lot of credit. He has until recently hasn't had many any injury issues as a running quarterback in the past for sliding at the beginning of his career. And Tua had a lot of mobility issues because of injuries he got in college with his legs. Now he's getting more of them with his head the last three years. And that's a big problem for his long-term health. And that kind of thing, those instincts don't go away. Yes, you can protect the turf all you want. 
he still might have gotten hurt on that particular play. The offensive line is bad as it is. That wasn't their fault. Like those kind of instincts have to be cleaned up if he wants to continue his football career. And I think he does. It doesn't seem like a guy that wants to retire by any means. And Mike McDaniel and the Dolphins organization seems like they're supporting him in that decision. But he has to get those instincts gone if he wants to continue his career. Otherwise, yeah, maybe he has Andrew Luck, another Andrew Luck that has to retire. And the whole and the whole Matthew Stafford thing is ridiculous. I understand that the Rams. Don't look good. They just lost Puka Nakua for a couple of weeks. They lost Cooper Cup, which is killing me on my fantasy. I'm I'm screwed. Okay, I, it's it's been a bad couple of weeks for yes, yours truly when it comes to fantasy. But nevertheless, I I you gotta we gotta move on. You gotta hope that these some of these other players that you brought up, you drafted are gonna show up and and appear to be half decent so you can stay afloat until these guys come back. But there's no way the Rams are just going to trade away Matthew Stafford. The season is not over. And if they could stay afloat, they could stay afloat in a division that's wide open. Okay. Seattle's not that good. Arizona is not that good. And San Francisco is, is good. But I mean, San Francisco just lost Christian McCaffrey. We don't know when he's coming back, if he's coming back, you know? So where are they at as an organization? So, I mean, it is wide open. So if I was the Rams, I don't just throw the season away and say, you know what, we'll bring Bryce Young in. That makes sense. That makes no sense for Sean McVay. That makes no sense for Matthew Stafford if he wants to go to the Dolphins. And, and, and again, maybe Matthew Stafford likes California. He's from California. Why would he want to move his family to to Miami in the middle of the season, it doesn't make sense. Miami can't afford happen. it anyway. It's not going to happen. It might, Matthew Stafford's on the end of a big contract. They as have well. a better chance of getting Tom Brady. They have a better chance of getting Tom Brady than getting Matthew Stafford. So Chase Daniels and whoever thinks that this is going to happen, I I think you need to kick dirt or you know hang out in the you know a locker room or something. I mean, and, and, you know, chat with some other quarterbacks that are not playing right now. I think theoretically where he's coming from, it makes sense, but yes, I uh, analyze the financial. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe Chase Daniels can come out of retirement and, and, <laughs> and be, be the starting quarterback for the Dolphins. That makes better <laughs> sense. <laughs> bring it in, you know, bring in a Matthew Stafford. You probably have to ride Fitzpatrick's the second highest paid backup. So who knows? Oh <laughs> man, it's ridiculous. Uh, by the way, we have Keith on the phone. Go ahead, Keith. Hey, what's going on? What's up, Keith? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's hard for a guy. That's what he does for a living. That's what he loves. You know, it, a lot of guys have had more concussions. But, yeah, the whole slot going head first is just, I guess you can't help your natural instinct. But it was, like, even the players are saying, like, what the hell is he doing? Thinking as he's doing, like, no, don't go head first. But uh, I don't see him. Uh, I think he'll come back. You know, he'll come back probably, but doesn't oh, mean, been, that uh, doesn't mean the instincts are like, not going to go away. That doesn't mean he's going to die or anything, but, but by the time he's 50 or 60, he'll be shot. If not, or like all the other guys, five, I mean, five concussions in three years, Keith. I mean, that's, I, worse know, than... I know I agree with you. I agree with you. I just don't think he will. No, he uh, won't. No, and, he and, won't. and that's what worries me more than anything, because this well, guy's no putting his, I am. Fuck him. <laughs> Um, no, you I don't mean, want anybody to choice, go down. You know what I mean? You don't I'm, want anybody I'm, to go down. If he makes a choice, that's on him, mm -hmm. ultimately. So, worried about him? Nah. I'm worried about you, young lady. I mean, young guy, man. You call me nah. young lady? That was not speedy, actually. But anyway, <laughs> um, as far as uh, the Rams, I, I would trade staff because they definitely season this stuff. They're, they're horrible, like I told you they would be. Um, Miami can't it. afford it though. If they could afford it, maybe. No, well, right? yeah, you're right. You're right. They can't. Well, I would. And Thompson obviously sucks. Um, I don't know what they're going to do. Well, you know what? Getting Huntley is a bad. Is a bad man. Oh, that's Jeff's they boy, Tyler. Huntley. Snoop. You know what I mean? He played well with the Ravens. Oh, you want to? Keith, you want a good? You want a good? Yeah, he was. Out. He was a Pro Bowl player. That's because half the players decided they didn't want to play in the Pro Bowl. Which is the reason two years ago, Jeff said <laughs> Tyler Huntley was a better quarterback than Doc Prescott. Oh, please. What a joke. He's right. Get out of here. Get out of here. Come on, Keith. Even two years no, but ago. He's not bad. He really isn't. But he's not Dak Prescott. And I'm, I'm not. He's not Dak Prescott from two that. years ago. I know that. But, he, but he, yeah, but so what? It, it, it's not a bad pickup for right now, I'm saying. No, it's a, it's a good pickup. Like that, better than Thompson. 
Yeah. Gross Vitti, you'd be better than Thompson. No, that's, not, that's not true, but yes. Yeah, so, uh, Tyler Huntley looks like a pro bowler compared to Skylar Thompson. Yeah, yeah, maybe he does in that scheme. No, I'm not. Stop. Don't, uh, don't try to fool yourself, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you no, might end up uh, getting CT like Tua. Errol, as far as our uh, ice cream sandwich spread, I guess we'll change the flying saucer. <laughs> sources, but Cousins, he looked awful in the first week. Yes, he, he didn't did. look great last week. He looked good. Um, I don't know. It's a weird team. You know? Who knows with them? I I, I'll, tell Allen, you, I, I'll tell you this. I, got lucky. I picked Allen up on my fantasy this week. I couldn't believe nobody else went for it in my league because I'm, I'm in first place right now and with my, my family league. I got... Uh, Whatever, but I got—I picked him up. Like, why wouldn't anybody else pick him up? He was outside the top 200 of consensus ranking. So unless your league is large, it probably wouldn't have been like that easy. Oh, no, it's all guys. Him. No, no, no. It's a good pickup. Mm. Look how many no, points. No, it's a good pickup. I, I would have drafted him too. I had him like one. No, no. I tra- I took him up on my bench. Okay. okay, I got a great so and a great bench. But I'm like, why not? And especially if Shea Hall gets hurt, yeah. now I'm suddenly getting a shitload of points. Well, here's and and here's happens. another thing with Brandon Allen. I think Braylon he's Allen, he's going to be he's going to be used a lot in this offense now because oh, now yeah. the Jets now the Jets trust that he can run the ball and he's going to run with authority. I, and Brees so Hall, you think he's going to pick up for me? I, I I think he's going to be fine. I think he's going to touch the ball a lot more now because the Jets he trust do. that he can run the ball and he can run it down the you know run it down the plant you know run it down the hole. It, Brees Hall is more he's become more dependent on catching the ball in the backfield and using his legs on the outside. I I think now I mean, with Braylon really, Allen, Braylon Allen's going to be a power Allen, back. He's, he's going to beat, and he can punish. The, the thing with Braylon Allen, and this is what Josh Jacobs did with the New York Giants, is he punished the all, the defensive linemen all those yeah, years. All that he that's what he did. And what did uh, he open Jay, up? Jay, he he, he opened he opened up for Bradshaw. He opened up for Ward, and that's why they were uh, they, they were uh, worth Earth went in fire, but. Jacobs was one who was pounding in, pounding in, and, and weakening that defensive line. Fun. And I think, I think that's what it, uh, the Jets are going to use a guy like Braylon Allen. He, they're going to and make. To do with Allen, Allen's faster than Jacobs ever was. Yeah. Uh, he flies, man. I can't believe how fast he is. And they talked about that in preseason. You can tell that they had, so that was that's a great, great pickup, great draft choice right there. Uh, well, again, the Jets are going to have to hope. That he stays healthy because the Jets, all these all these great pickups, these great offensive and defensive players that they draft within a year or two years of, you know, a guy like Joe Douglas, these guys don't stay healthy. I mean, look, Jermaine Johnson goes down for the season. He's with a torn Achilles. This is his second year and his first full year as a starter, and he's down. He's out for the season. What's next? Garrett Wilson? I mean, I, that, that's what that's what bothers yeah, me about these the players. Jets, you got to expect that. You knew it was going to happen. So why um, why are they swaying away from the team. process just because they're the Jets? Yes, they're cursed. I don't so believe like, any of that. I don't. No, I'm fucked with it. But seriously, though, <laughs> no. but it's just the Jets' shit luck. It's, um, it's 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 just bad luck. And, and again, if you're a Jet fan and you're excited, I, I am a huge Jet fan, as you know. Yeah. If you're a Jet fan and you're it's excited, me and uh, your boy Jeff, yeah, okay, all right, okay. stop, stop. <laughs> if you're a Jet fan and you're excited for what you've seen in the first two weeks, I'm going to tell you this right now: this oh, is not no, what I we expected. Jet fan who's happy about the first two weeks, but the fourth quarter, I was like, okay, this is what they expected from their day. Okay, that's you know, it, it showed up definitely. Well, offensively, they looked much better. I think because of Allen bringing him in, he's a huge weapon. And like uh, Fish said, they, they got to find a way to get them in there more, and they will. Um, well, maybe who knows who that coach. And as far as as far as Atlanta is, I I think Atlanta is they the real deal. I don't know what I'm, team. I'm, I'm, they're not. They have a lot of weapons. They still haven't used Kyle Pitts as much oh, as they I, should. I think they'll be good. I, I I would be good, but you don't know. B. John and, Robinson is a star. If it, it, to me, oh, the yeah. guy is a beast, and they they got to keep giving I'm the ball. With that. I kind of hate it. Algeri, Algeri, uh, he's another guy that can run the ball. They have two really good backs. They have Drake London who can catch the ball. This Drake is really good. They, right? they have weapons, and the They're offensive and the offensive lines played well, and they have a good defense when they show up. Game in and game out. There are there are plays that they just don't show up. And, and I'm gonna yeah, tell you this right now. I am not. I am not surprised that the Eagles lost that game. And I'm an Eagles guy. I, is, uh, let me tell you. The, like I told you, the Eagles weren't going to be that good. 
And I still think I, 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 first of all, I think the Eagles are fine. They just don't have a pass rush. I, the, the right. problem, what, the, uh, but that whole division sucks. The problem with the Eagles right now is their coach. Their coach doesn't know what the hell he's doing. He has absolutely no, no, no idea what he's doing. And at the end of the game, after they scored and everybody thought it was over, and then they just let the ball go right down the field and gave Atlanta a, a touchdown oh, you know the way they did. It was now, despicable. It was despicable. One thing you got to say, and I'm going back and forth with this myself, okay, like me, probably, I don't know. I would have. But he probably felt confident with the play, and it was a great play call. And Barkley's wide open, and as usual, he drops key passes. Well, he didn't. Play. First of all, he was looking at who was behind him. He, right. he actually, does that all the time, though. Oh, oh he's been doing that since he was a giant. You know he does. But well, he's a great player. But he does. He drops key passes all the time because you know what he does. He and I, I guess this is not his own thing. He looks up before he takes the ball in. So and he does that a lot. He's a leading uh, running back pass dropper in the last four years in the NFL by far. Um, I I I'd, I'd, I'd love Saquon Barkley anyways because Saquon Barkley I don't know he has forty six rushes yeah, you know two hundred and four yards and three touchdowns that's yeah. pretty good for me I mean I take that in. Oh, if you have a fantasy yeah but uh, as far as you know what it's still a right move by the Giants in my opinion because they're gonna suck with him or without him I'm glad for Barkley got the hell out of there but either way you know what they're gonna sell out anyway so they're not gonna make any less of money. Single Terry's done a fine job last week. Played great, and either way, they're going to last stop. week he did not play great. He had week one. Had that yeah, he no, he didn't. He, he played had... well receiving, not he running. Did. This week he played he's okay. Still at ninety-eight yards. I'm saying this week. Barkley. This he's week, playing close as Barkley. The this week, this past week he played fine. Yes, the week before that he played like God. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Last week's games. Uh -huh. They but, also they also played against that not a very good defense. Okay, let's be honest. Oh yeah, right. But I'm saying he still listen. I think they made the right move. If Saquon Barkley played in this game, how many yards do you think he has? What's that? If Saquon Barkley played in this game, how many yards do you think he has? With the giant, maybe about the same, maybe a little more. You're out of your Only mind. Is, wait, 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 You're out of listen. your mind. He would have had a hundred. He would have had hundred and sixty yards and two now. touchdowns. I, from, I've been hearing you. You haven't even let me speak. You've been speaking the whole time. It, what are you no, speaking about? I, yes, I, you have. Yes, okay. you have. You've been cutting me off every single time. Go ahead, speak. Go. Let's no, hear no, it. Go. Let's go. Let's hear it. Go ahead. So say what it. I'm saying is, they're poorly coached, right? As you know, and I, I don't think it would make it. It doesn't make a difference anyway. If it the doesn't. Giants had, they're gonna suck either way. So you're telling me if Saquon Barkley played in this game, they don't win? No, win. you're out of your mind. Oh, come on. You're man. out of your mind. You're, you're <laughs> out of your mind. Come on, man. You have, you have lost it. You have lost it. Singletary can only run on the outside. You talk like it's out of here. That's your opinion. Get out of here. There's no doubt in my mind they win this game if they had Saquon Barkley. Maybe he would have dropped the oh. pass like he did. Hey, let me ask you a question. Mm, let's hear if it. Barkley catches the pass, do the Eagles win? No. Why? No. If Barkley caught that pass, do the Eagles win? No. That last pass, hey, he would, would have clinched it for them. How do we know he would have gotten in? We don't know if he would have gotten in. He was getting in. They just needed a first down. Him. It would have been a first hey, down. Hey, ask but... me right now. Do you think they get in and be honest? Yes, they get a first down. That doesn't mean it was the only reason they lost the game. Wait, 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 wait. I'll watch the play again. The clock out if they watch don't the get play. Watch I, the play. I, I so, they have won? Most of, most of the Eagles fans I've so seen. On, how do we know if he caught it? How do we know if he didn't get? Hold on. How do we know if he caught it? If you watch it right here. How do we know he turns his head, he gets hit, and he drops the ball? How do we know? How do if we what? know that didn't happen? And They run it in for a touchdown. How do we know? No, he doesn't have to run it for a touchdown. They Keith, win the game if Keith, he catches the pass. Keith, he still wouldn't have gotten the first down there. There's a good chance he would have. He doesn't have to. They go down. They take a knee. Right? Speedy, you know it's true. Probably. If, but maybe. Okay, I'm probably Speedy. Stop. But again, it's not the That's only the, reason okay, they okay, lost. Okay, no, at the same point as you. How about most stopping likely, the? Yeah. How about Wait, stopping Atlanta? Listen. How about stopping right. Atlanta? Now, most likely, if Rocky went to the Giants, they were the one right. Most likely, 99.9% .9 chance that Barkley catches the pass they would have won. He's dropped okay. passes like that his whole career. Yeah, most likely is fine, but um, it's also not Barkley. the only but reason they thing, lost. Same thing as you guys. No, I agree. If you make the play call, though, where 
they they uh, run it again and let the time run out, they probably win. Yes, I said the shitty coaching. Okay, we don't know for a fact that Dan Barkley would have won because we have no idea what would have happened, what other calls they make. You know what I'm saying? The Giants are poorly coached, so I I I get it what you're saying. Yeah, probably, but either way, it's a good move because they're not going to make the playoffs no matter goddamn what. I want them, and I'm not right you to go on with 17 so they can get Hunter. I really do. They're going to suck, and you know it with Barkley without. Am I right? There's no guarantees they're going to draft Hunter anyways if they're in a top two. Or top no, three. I know that because they need a quarterback. But if I was them, I wouldn't care. Still, I draft Hunter because he's the best collegiate player I've seen in years. He goes both ways. So think about that. I'm sure he goes you both know ways. It. You agree with me. He definitely goes you both ways. You agree with me. He is. Definitely. Is he not? Oh, he definitely goes both ways. And who knows what he does in the bedroom? You know? <laughs> well, well that's <laughs> goes, he goes three ways. The farm animals, too, I heard. <laughs> but especially to him, let's ask Dion. Let's ask Dion. He might know. The Buffaloes, you know what I'm saying? So he was the Buffaloes. So he goes three ways. But, uh, but no, he is. He the thing of uh, still playing that great, playing the whole game. It's actually stupid of, of Sanders. He's gonna hurt the guy. He could actually get the guy hurt. But he don't give a fuck. He's just, he has, Sanders cares about himself. No, nobody no said Sanders. he was the brightest either. Mm-mm. Yeah. We know that yeah, this to be is true. And and you know, <laughs> I did think it, as I said, of going both ways, you, you beat you beat uh, you beat me to it. Mm, well. uh, but I, I, if there's uh, anybody that knows that, it's Deion Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> well, Speedy, you would know more than anybody if Deion goes that way. No, I would. I don't know where you get that context from, but uh if, 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 on, if Travis Danny. Hunter does do that, he could impersonate the uh, Odell pizza that's what, bedroom That's what your video. boy said over there when it's uh, <laughs> speedy at the dark. I don't know. Oh, Odell Beckham. Hmm. Yeah. That, that'll be uh, Travis Hunter. We'll be uh, impersonating oh. that with uh, that uh, the chick was in the pizza pizza box with the it's Odell. Speedy, I heard he's felt like a buffalo. I mean a horse. What? There were no uh, horses in that what? video, Keith. What? I'm a drink. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm down. Keith, there were no horses nor buffaloes in that video. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. Colorado's got plenty of farm animals, Speedy. Mm-hmm. Yes, they do. Okay, yeah, ask okay. Travis Hunter if he's had any encounters with them. I doubt it. <laughs> but I don't uh, know. He gets it on with uh, Sanders' son. Both of them. Oh, okay. That, that makes more sense than a, a horse or a, or a buffalo. <laughs> All right, well, back to the uh, buffaloes, but Either way, I want the Giant, you know, and I, I was talking to a Giant fan today, and he says, uh, no, I don't want them to lose every game. I go, this team will be lucky if they win three games. <laughs> okay. Am I right? Probably right at this point, yeah. <laughs> okay. With Barkley, let's say they would win maybe two or three more, but they're lucky. Okay, they beat Washington, though. <laughs> That's so one. What? That's one. Maybe. You don't know for a fact, because they're a dumb, poorly coached team. Well, Sa- that's yeah, Devin it's Singletary not does not run yeah. well outside. Saquon most does well, well, run well inside. Most likely you win, but who are they going to beat of the world? The Washington. So, so, you, so you obviously are against what Salakat is saying, say, saying that if Dable gets fired, it's a big mistake. So, you are absolutely against Salakata, right? Yeah, I think. I oh no, I think Dable uh, should be fired. I I do too. I just think Dable should end, be fired a while ago. Jam. Just for that oh, reason being. Just for the fact that you don't pick up a kicker before that, is that insane? Yeah. Now, I didn't know, I don't know how I didn't know that he was hurt, right? Um, you know, whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, why the fuck are they going for for two? But, all right, so they tried to the kick and he missed the extra point, right? Mm-hmm. So what? You, you got to keep doing it. Either way, it's You could have brought I, in an ex-college player, a insane. CFL kicker. I, I think that. would have brought me in a kick. I mean. And I have, you know. I'll cripple with my, especially my right leg. But you better say. We've interviewed a lot of kickers that could probably kick in the NFL still. Why don't they reach out to any of them? I mean, come on. Right. How do you not do ridiculous. that? So, no, we agree. That I think you should have been fired immediately. I would love to be a fly on the wall in Joe Shane's office after oh Sunday's game. I would have loved to well, hear you know what? what John Mara Shane? said to both of those idiots. They both should be gone. How does he not get, either <laughs> one get a kicker? Out of here, out of here. I, I, first of all, you know what I feel about Joe Shane. That whole hard knocks bull crap was all about him. It had nothing to do with the Giants. It was everything with he, Joe Shane. It should have been, been Joe Shane. Giants. Hard knocks. 
That's what it should have been. Not Giants hard knocks. It should have been Joe Shane, Giants hard knocks. Look, they, they embarrassed themselves on that show. Oh, they absolutely. He embarrassed it's himself. It's what a shitty organization they've become. Yeah. And, you, you know, I know I've become a Jeff fan, you know. Oh, God. But, but, uh, why? Why would you do that? That's a big mistake, too. <laughs> There's a Giants even worse. Yeah, well, we know. There's no doubt. I mean, when you have a guy named hey, Bambi. Guy playing the Super Bowl the latest. Yeah. Doesn't make the Jets still not uh, somewhat dysfunctional when it comes to. Oh, well, I'm going into Ranger territory now. It'll be like since 1940 and whatever. But the Yankees got plenty of World Series. Uh, about the Yankees. You know, why not talk about that? Well, we'll talk coming. about the Yankees a little bit later. You All right, real quick. Yeah, you know, go ahead. Good move. Someone goes to the bullpen, right? Screw them. What happened? What was the question? I like the move of Stroman going to the bullpen. The pits in meaningless relief. I think so, too. You know, maybe he could go long relief if needed, though, in a tight game, too. It was a good move because Cortez is definitely better. Finally, uh, you know, Aaron Boone is uh, doing the right thing. I mean, I like Aaron Boone. I don't yeah. take shots at him. Yeah, I like well, is it finally. Hmm? Finally, he got the pitch to figure it out. He does. The yes. bullpen. I was saying forever, when is he going to make Weaver the fucking closer? The Yankees when should he... win the pennant. They should win the pennant. They yes, should run yes. away with it. But it, we'll see. We'll see what happens. The Yankees, Philly, so Two weeks Yankees, left. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm looking forward yeah, to seeing what happens. Yeah. I think the Yankees will win. Mm. And I hope it's Houston. Well, keep it. listening. We'll get into the Yankees right, a little bit later in the show, buddy. So you could call. Uh, remember? Hmm? Well, as I always say, Speedy, it's only a lie. It's not a lie if you believe it. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. <laughs> well, before we uh, before we get our guests, and we're just waiting for Jeremy uh, Fish. You, I wanted to get your your uh, comment yes. you made in the private yes. chat. Who yes. do you think the Dolphins should trade for? So there's obviously not a lot of great choices, and no one in like the AFC is really going to be willing to give anybody. But there's a flashy team that has an extra quarterback that rather put Cooper Rush out there as a backup <laughs> than Trey Lance. Trey Lance Stop. is available. I'm a Dolphins fan. Stop. <laughs> Stop. I tell you right now, it's either him or Bryce Young are the only How guys. About Ryan Tannehill. How about that? For cheap. How about Ryan Tannehill? Look, he's pretty old, you know. We'll oh, see. Yes. I mean, and it didn't end Stop well. It. it did not end well when he was there the first time. He doesn't have a job right now. Might as well get, make him a. He's a competent quarterback, is he not? He's definitely more. He wasn't competent. the last couple of years, but you you would be right. He's more competent than those two guys. Oh, definitely. Trey, there's a lot of upside with Trey Lance. Everyone, there's, no one's really given him a shot. I think the reason is he looks terrible when he's in practice or something like that. But oh, he God. is really fast. You can do some kind of interesting running stuff, and you know McDaniel's loves the running game. So I wouldn't be shocked to see him maybe try to flip like a fifth or a sixth to Dallas for you know flashy teams trading with each other. It just sounds too good to be true. Those two teams, you know, that, that's what I would do. Well, for, if they're trying to go for Bryce Young, we're going to talk about him after our guest. Yeah, Bryce Young has only played a little over a year, and he was the I don't number want one him. overall pick. He's done. But I don't he's know just, if you go for him. He's just like uh, Zach Wilson. He's right now. He's, if Canales can't fix him, nobody can. Canales, you saw what he did with Baker Mayfield. Baker, look what Baker Mayfield's doing right now. I mean, come on. I mean, who would have thought that Baker Mayfield, had a, besides Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen, who would have thought that? And by the way, how's Sam Donald doing? <laughs> Jet fans, what are you going to say about that one? Oh, my God. It, it, it makes me sick. It makes me sick watching Sam Donald make these throws and look like look like a, you know, a superstar player. It, it's it, it's it's just fitting to watch another Jets quarterback go to another franchise and show up and actually play as well as he has. So I and I'm, I I'm, I want to let everybody know this. I thought Sam Donald was going to have a good year. Anybody that listens to the show, I have said it's watch Sam Donald have this great year where he's a borderline Pro Bowl player. He throws 3,500 yards and 28, 30 touchdowns, and then next year Minnesota is going to have questions on who his their starter is going to be because. How could you not extend Sam Donald if he has a great season? Because I'm going to tell you this right now. Who would have thought this? I mean, honestly, he's been one of the top four quarterbacks in the NFC in the first two weeks. Mm -hmm. I think there was a graph uh, it was uh, I saw on Twitter that uh, Geno Smith had like some of the best accuracy rankings, and Sam Darnold was uh, like fourth or fifth or something like that. Makes me sick. Battle of the uh, former Jets quarterbacks in a uh, small sample MVP race. It is unbelievable. He's, they're two and zero. Oh. 
They're putting up points. They're playing defense. And Sam Darnold has been unbelievable. I mean, the throws that he's making, throwing it down. And I lit, I knew this was going to happen because he actually has a competent wide receiver that can go up there and get the ball. Now, we'll see if Justin Jefferson plays this week. He did get hurt. He says that he might. Uh, but we'll see. I, I, Justin Jefferson doesn't like to sit down for anybody. So if it, and this, they're saying this is a hamstring again. If it is a hamstring, the Minnesota Vikings are going to be cautious and, 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 and make sure that he is at least 95 to 90% healthy to put him out there. Cause this guy is their franchise. He is their franchise. So, uh, but I mean, the Vikings are the best team in the NFC North. Who would have thought that? And with a backup quarterback that was a, been a journeyman, Rarely since he left the New York Jets. So, yeah, no one, no Addison, no Hawkinson. And I mm -hmm. think one of their offensive linemen was hurt in that game. Dude, as he's well. been unbelievable. I, I mean, it, the, so, the surprise so far this season and comeback player of the year is Sam Donald. I, I don't know if anybody would even argue that right now on what he's putting up, the numbers that he's putting up, and just the dominance uh, of what he's. And by the way, he's very coachable. You see him on the, when he, throws the ball away or he makes a mistake. You see the coach come to him. O'Connell comes to him. You can see that he's listening. He's, he's drawing, you know, he he's drawing it up for him right on the sidelines. He's sitting right next to him and Sam's just listening and watching. If there's any position Sam Donald wants to be, it's right where he is right now. And I, I'm going to tell you this right now. There could be some arguments in the off season. Uh, do they, do they go with, uh, you know, the quarterback that they drafted uh, in the offseason? Or do they move him and keep Sam Darnold? Remember, Sam Darnold was the youngest quarterback drafted seven years ago. He's 27 years old. He's still really young, and he's just going into the prime of his career. We've seen quarterbacks really turn it around. Kirk Cousins didn't get his shot until he was like 26. Yep. And look, look what Kirk Cousins become. So, so my favorite fantasy name of all time that year when he was named starter over RG3. I I, I'm Robert telling you right now. String. I'm telling you right now. Sam Darnold's going to be the hottest name in the offseason. Hottest name. And, and mark my words. This isn't a fluke. This is not a fluke for all you fans out there. Sam will be doing this all season long. Minnesota's going to be fighting for that division. Everybody keeps talking about the Lions. The Lions have not looked good. They have not. And by the way, for, and I, Sam Laporter, who I, I love, he hasn't looked good the first two weeks. They got to use more Sam Laporter. They got to get him more involved. I, I expected more from the, the young Lions team. They're not playing as well as I expected them to do over the, you know, over the first two weeks. But we'll see. It's still early. The Packers, uh, the Packers earn, you know, they won, they earn that win. I'm going to tell you that they earn that win. But who's to say that's going to continue going? I mean, hopefully Jordan Love, don't rush Jordan Love back, but hopefully Jordan Love comes back and it can maybe. But this division is wide open, and this is one of the best divisions in football. After the Yankees blew out the Mariners last night, uh, Juan Soto expressed how cool it was that he has now homered every at, at every MLB park. WFAN's Chris Mack said that those comments show he is only thinking about free agency. He added that the Yankees will have to pay Soto an enormous contract at the at, at that at this point, probably 600 million range. WFAN's Greg Giannotti said the comment shows cash is all the players think about. Boomer Esiason says he doesn't expect the Yankees to pay Soto a contract worth uh, over uh, 500 million. Soto has a 287 batting average, a 994 OPS, 120 121 walks, 40 home runs, and 103 RBIs this season. Juan Soto is not coming back to the New York Yankees. I've been selling this. I've been trying to explain that to all the Yankee fans. You don't want to, you don't want to agree with me. That's fine. There is no way the Yankees are paying him over $600 million. The Mets will. The Yankees will not. I the only way Juan Soto stays the Yankees stays with the Yankees is if he takes somewhere around the range of 500 to 550, takes a pay cut for at least $100 million. Will he? Probably not. I expect him to take a boatload of money, and it's probably going to be the New York Mets, and that's because there is an owner there that will be willing to overpay for a superstar player that good. We saw what he did with Lindor, and I expect him to do the same with uh, Juan Soto. Now, I do think Juan Soto is, you know, speaking, you know, you know, says these things. I because he wants to make the money and he wants to show that, you know, he he, he believes that he's the best player in baseball. 
he still believes, even with probably the best player in baseball right now on his team, he believes he's the best player on that team. Now, only time will tell. The playoffs are right around the corner. If Juan Soto shows up this playoff, these playoffs and helps the Yankees win a World Series or helps the Yankees go far into the playoffs and Aaron Judge has another bad playoff run because Aaron Judge, before this last past week, he was in a slump. For two weeks, he couldn't hit a home run. He couldn't hit. He couldn't hit a lick. It, he would. It was unbelievable how he just completely lost his range. And now, all of a sudden, in the last couple of days, the last couple of games, he's starting to you know smack the ball all all over the field now. So, uh, hopefully, Aaron Judge doesn't go into those like those stints where he can't hit the ball. But uh, right now, Juan Soto believes he's the best player in in baseball, and he very much could be. Now he's got to prove it you know, in, in the big games. And he's got to prove it with the Yankees in the most important games. And that's in the playoffs. Now, as far as what Greg Giannotti says, say, saying that it cashes all the players are thinking about, I disagree. They want to win. You don't think Juan Soto wants to win. He wants to win because if he wins and he helps the Yankees win, guess what he's going to bring in more money, more money. So winning brings in cash, cash brings in riches. And, and obviously brings in endorsements. So why wouldn't Juan Soto want to win? To say that he only cares about the money is ridiculous, okay? Greg Giannotti's wrong about that. When you're playing for the New York Yankees, you're expected to make the playoffs. You're expected to make a run. That's why he's there. If the Yankees win a World Series this year and Juan Soto goes to the Mets, it was worth every penny. It was worth it. In the Yankees' eyes, Juan Soto coming to the Yankees for one year and winning a World Series and he goes to the Mets, it was worth every single penny that they gave him in arbitrations and, and everything they gave up to get him from the Padres. So I, I, I know that a lot of people in Boomer Esiason saying that the Yankees won't pay him. We don't know what the Yankees are thinking in their head. We don't know. We don't know what Hal Steinbrenner is thinking. Now, if it was George, it'd be different. If it was George Steinbrenner, he'd say, how much do you want? I'll write you the damn check. He'd be signed by that. He'd be signed already. But it's Blank Hal check. Steinbrenner. It's Hal Steinbrenner. And Hal still has the highest pay uh, pay total when it comes to teams right now. Uh, highest, highest salary right now in all of MLB. I think it's over $350 million. It, it's not like the Yankees are cheap. They're spending the most money. They're spending the most money. They're just spending in a different areas. Pitching and you know, relief and all this other stuff. They can't just go out and just pay a guy $700 million because he's fantastic. I know the Yankees would like to do that. I know Hal Steinberg would like to do that, but he doesn't want to play. He doesn't want to pay all these other teams $60 million next year because he's over the salary cap or whatever they call it, the luxury tax. So I, th I think right now, yeah, I, I think Juan Soto thinks he's the best player in baseball. I think that he knows that he's going to free agency free agency this year. He's having a great year. He's going to hit over 50 home runs by the end of the season. He's got, what, two weeks? Uh, two weeks left. He'll, he'll close to 50 home runs, probably 45, 47. He's going to have close to 50 home runs, 120 RBIs. He's right. He's up right now. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if he smacks the ball out of here now. But the guy is a sensational player. He's just not going to be a Yankee. The Yankees have a, a, a farm system. They have a, a good young player. I forget his name, but uh, you know his name. What's, what's his name? Jones. Spencer Jones. Uh, Spencer Jones is a, is a good left, left fielder, left-handed power uh, bat. The Yankees have somebody to fill in. They're not going to overpay somebody that they can fill in and it is the future of this organization moving forward with him, Jason Dominguez, out there in the outfield with Aaron Judge. So, I, I'm not surprised that this is going on, and I'm not going to be surprised that, you know, at the end of the season, he goes elsewhere, probably to the Mets, and, you know, falls and falls off the, you know, falls off the bridge. Because that's what <laughs> most of these guys do. They go somewhere else and they never win, especially with the Mets. Yeah, it, it's interesting because I, I think when you're dealing with a comment like what, what Greg Giannotti was saying, like the com the players only care about the money. That's not I, true. I think Soto is also in a unique circumstance. I talked about it a couple months ago with he's a lot like with Miguel Cabrera. Like Miguel Cabrera won a World Series his rookie year with the Marlins, so he went to go chase the money and also, but he also decided to get rid of that poverty organization in the Miami Marlins at the time that were just after they won the World Series, just so dysfunctional. Speedy, if he was chasing the money, why didn't he take the Nationals contract? No, I know that. Now the Nationals contract was also like low in terms of average annual value at the time. It doesn't matter. It was $400 million. He doesn't have to worry about anything. He no, doesn't I, have to worry about anything. I understand. But he bet on himself. 
He bet on his talent. So that says a lot about him as a player. It wasn't about money. It was about winning. Hmm. And also, I think you'll also look at the circumstances of the players wanting to stay with certain organizations that, or the organizations are still going to be stable in their own right. And this is where I compare it to Albert Pujols, the circumstance with the Cardinals. The Cardinals are going to do things their own way, a lot like the Yankees are going to do things their own way, too. And I think that's where I think the WFAN guys and some Yankee fans are having it wrong. Oh, where the, Yankees, haters. the Yankees are still going to operate under their own process in the way they're doing it. Now, I think a lot of the decisions of what they're going to do with Juan Soto is going to come down to a couple of things. One of which is John Carlos Stanton's contract, which is going to be next to impossible to move. I think that's one. Garrett Cole, I think, is a big wild card in this because of his option now with all the injury issues he's had this year. If they could try to figure that out. He's going to opt in. I think he will, too. If they could try to figure that out, how much money they'll have, the Yankees should be able to maybe make something work, whether they front load the contract or like fish. We discussed when we were texting earlier, maybe try to defer money and try to make it like not to the extreme, like Otani's contract, but try to defer the money where they can make it work, where maybe he gets more money on the back end to keep him happy, but still get the $600 million. It's not going to have. So that that's, that's my hope. I, Errol, if how Steinbrenner doesn't open up the bank for this guy, he should sell the team. This is the guy that they've been waiting for forever. The left-handed bat that has the swing that's even better at Yankee Stadium. He's never hit 40 home runs before, as far as I understand. 35 and he's was 35 was his highest. He's going to get a 45 or so. This guy is unbelievable. He's top five player in the league as far as a hitter. His defense is, you know, it's it's average to above average this year. And that you got, and he's 27. Well, what what are you doing? Who cares about Spencer Jones? Spencer Jones only about 26. He'll be 27 next season. Mm-hmm. I was just looking up Stanton's contract, Speedy. You know it goes down. He has one more year over thirty million, and then it goes under twenty the last three okay. years of the deal. So it's actually movable after next year. So it's not exactly as per- cost prohibitive as they'd make you think. I also, I think the bigger thing is never in the history of baseball has anyone chosen the Mets brand over the Yankees brand. We're not talking about Luis Severino being forced out and having to become a Mets. Pitcher. Oh, he's not choosing We're talking the about Mets. Actively he's choosing, choosing the to leave. The- He's, he's not going to choose the money to go to the Mets. He'll go somewhere else. It ain't going to be for the Mets. I'll tell you that straight up right now. Okay. I don't care if they make the playoffs. It's when you not see be- $700 million go right into your bank account. Uh, that, and, and by the way, he doesn't want any deferred money. He wants it all up front. Well, Boris doesn't want any deferred money. And he really we know we money. know that is the thing with that with the deferred money for him. And who so, do you think uh, is look, willing to give him that kind of money? The New York Mets. Look, Spencer Jones, since I traded for him in my dynasty league, I've realized there's plenty of warts on him as a baseball player. Oh, he does have power, but do you know what his strikeout rate was this year? Okay. Uh, did you know what Aaron Judge strikeout no, no, no. rate when he was coming from? No one is minus? no one is this high. It's 36.8. And 36.8 has never succeeded in Major League Baseball. That's Adam Dunn territory, <laughs> and, and his was like 33. So, look. If that's the guy that he is, maybe he's he's useful, but I wouldn't be like, oh, we can't get Soto because Adam, the next Adam Dunn's waiting in the wings. That wouldn't make any sense to me. Adam Dunn was a very useful player, you know, three three true outcome Original player, kind of the, yeah, right. But and pretty good outfielder for a long time. People forget that. But it's it's not like you wouldn't pay Soto for that. And look, if Stanton's money is going to decrease and then maybe they move him, eat some of the salary the last couple of years or whatever it is they, they can get out of that. They can find ways to get this guy under contract and still be a similar number in the luxury tax. If Hal's not going to spend the money, it, you're, you shouldn't be the New York, the New York Yankees owner anymore. That's it's just how it is. And every Yankee fan who gives a damn about this team, how can look at what judge we just talked about, right? Judge is not great in the playoffs. Why isn't he great in the playoffs? He's not a sh- expand the zone type of guy like Vlad Guerrero, but the senior back in the day could hit a ball. Each could hit a ball bouncing for a home run, right? Both of those guys famously did that. Judge is so tall that he can't expand the zone. And what happens in the playoffs when he has no protection? They expand the zone. Guess what kind of what we're dealing with right now? If Stanton's a little is healthy enough to hit behind him, and you have Soto in front. It's lethal, and hopefully. The combination of the two of them together leads to that kind of success where we can take it to the pennant. That, that's that's the hope. You gotta keep you gotta keep that guy. That's the guy. And he's Dominican, the population, the Yankee fans in the Bronx. I mean, it's a it, it's like everything in How could one. Could you not be excited? If you're a Yankee. This fan. guy, Spencer Jones. I mean, 17 home runs, 78 RPMs, Oh no, I'm not against it. Cases. 
I mean, come on. I mean, this guy's 23 years old. He's in AAA and he's doing it. And and this guy, I'm telling you, I, every single every single person that we've had on this show that knows a little bit about minor league baseball has said Spencer Jones is the real deal. So I, I mean, he's I don't a care. Top hundred prospect according okay. to all the lists. So was he's Aaron Judge. So was he. I know. I know. I know. Aaron Trust Judge. Me, I know. Look, and if he's Aaron Judge, that's amazing because Aaron Judge is the best player in baseball. I don't think he's Aaron but, Judge, but I think he he's going to give you thirty to forty home runs. And he's going to give you about hundred RBIs, and that's what you expect from a guy with this kind of power. Oh, who cares? I mean, two fifty nine, a batting average with the power that he has. That's pretty good. That's pretty good in my eyes. I'm sorry, but hey, whatever. But if you're a 37 strikeout guy, how how good are you going to be in the postseason? All right, we'll see. You know what I mean? We'll see. 